says here, the farm office across the lawn is all that remains of the once sprawling plantation called Fairfield. There's that farm office. It said that war came here to Fairfield. They have a whole description of what happened here in December of 1862. And then there's a monument over here. Stonewall Jackson died on this site May 10th, 1863. He is buried in Lexington, Virginia. We are on the way to Animate Raleigh, which is a convention. I think it's the first one we've done in Raleigh. We've done Animate in Columbus and some other areas. I've always seen this sign on the highway. Figured I'd stop, take a look at it. I will warn you, this is about five, six minutes off the highway. So if you see it, this is what's here. So. You now know. Uh, we're gonna be checking out a handful of things on the way. I'm glad you're here. Stay tuned. We've made it to the North Carolina Welcome Center. Also looks like AEW has a truck that's here at the rest stop right now. Usually these trucks carry supplies for the shows, lighting, the ring, etc. So one of them's right here on the highway. Huh. Oh, wow. So, and so is he hit by a car near here? In, in near Charlotte. Oh, wow. Okay, so pretty far from here. Yeah. Right? We're not near Charlotte, right? No, about Charlotte's three hours. Charlotte's west, right? Yeah. yeah. So we have oh, a few wow. hours to go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He was probably a dark red when he was buried. Yeah. 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 That's very neat, though. All right, here it is. Welcome to North Carolina. So that was a fox that had been loaned to them. A local museum after it was hit by a car 50 years ago and taxidermied. They said they call them Fox in a Box. We're heading to Franklinton, which was the boyhood home, the birthplace of Soupy Sales, one of my favorites. Uh, also, Jack Johnson, heavyweight champion of the world, passed away in that. Actually, passed away in Raleigh, but he got in a crash there. So, we're going to go to the spot where he crashed. A bunch of other places. We have made it to Franklinton, and on January 8, 1926, Dr. A.R. Wilson, the town doctor, delivered Soupy Sales, Milton Supman, right here in this house. This was his grandparents' house. Now, Milton was given the nickname Soupy for reasons I don't fully understand. He said his brother had the nickname Hambone, and so he had the nickname Soup Bone, which then turned into Soupy, and his last name was. Supman, which other stories I've heard is that that's where the nickname came from. So I'm not sure, but he was born right here. We're gonna head over to a couple other sites instrumental to his early life. He did move out of here when he was still relatively young, but that's where he was born, right there. We're right down the street. This was the Metropolitan Zion Church built 1921. Apparently they're doing some restoration on it. You can see some cracks there in the windows. Behind me is a building that houses the town barber shop. That used to be the dry goods store that was owned by Soupy Sales parents. He said, uh, if you're wondering what the difference between wet goods and dry goods are, so am I. This is pretty neat here. This looks like this used to be a gas station. Yeah, Texaco Station Park. And they've got the Texaco sign here. And they've kept the building here. Look at this. And I don't know why there are bales of hay here. Yeah, there's the Texaco sign. Now across the street here is the Franklinton Middle School. But when Soupy went here, this was the only school in town. And so this is where he first ever performed on stage it was in this school where they did a play for Easter and he played Peter Rabbit and he said at six years old he knew that that's what he wanted to do for the rest of his life he wanted to be an entertainer and you can see on the very top there it says Franklinton Public School the barber shop has a really cool collection of old cars old steering wheel here very cool Americana pieces up there. Very nice.
So here is the town limit. Soupy said that this town was so small that the sign that said you are entering Franklinton also said you are now leaving Franklinton. In 1946, Jack Johnson, heavyweight champion of the world many decades prior, he was actually 68 years old at the time, was driving down Route 1, which used to be this road. Route 1 now bypasses Franklinton completely, but he was passing by this evergreen cemetery and he crashed his car into either a tree or a light post. Uh, and he later died of his injuries. We're going to go to where the hospital was that he was taken to, uh, but it was on this stretch of road that he was driving. Some reports are that he was very upset because he was turned down at a restaurant, but it looks like, as far as I can tell, those reports all started decades after he died. His passenger was still living uh, well after the crash and never said anything like that, as far as I can find. If you know anything, let me know. Uh, but this was a guy who had a lot of speeding tickets, liked to drive very fast cars, uh, and his life basically ended here. He wasn't pronounced dead until he was taken to the hospital, and the hospital is pretty fascinating today. We're going to go over to it right now. So we've made it to Raleigh. It's very windy here. Hopefully you can hear me great. The hair's blowing around. This is what remains of St. Agnes Hospital. And this is where Jack Johnson passed away. It says here that this hospital was erected in 1896. It was a training hospital for black nurses, but it was also the only African-American hospital in the area, which is why Jack Johnson was taken here. It says he was turned away from other hospitals before he got here, uh, and he died of his injuries here. It's interesting, the building is still standing. Um, they have not demolished the remains of it. They're looking to do something with it. I was looking online. It's been like this for a while. Uh, it's interesting to look at. I mean, you can see that at some point the roof fell in and just the, just the brick structure here remains. Here's a closer look at the building. It said that it's cross-shaped and I don't, I'm not sure I get what they mean by that. I don't know if it's from the top, maybe it looks cross-shaped, uh, but it does look like at one time it was a beautiful place. They've got this giant smokestack in the back here. And you can see they've got fences everywhere around here and lots of signs that say uh, that this is not the place to to come and, and try to walk around. Oh, they also say not to have your, your weapons. So don't bring your weapons here. And uh, yeah, this is all fenced in, but here's a good look. St. Agnes Hospital. I was reading online that this hospital struggled throughout the 50s to try to keep up with the advancements in science, technology, medicine, uh, and the hospital was condemned in 1955. It closed completely in 1961 after the Wake County Hospital agreed to treat black and white patients. Uh, so there was less of a need for it at that point. It started to fall apart and was declared a historic landmark by the city of Raleigh back in 1979. Look at this sign. This sign was installed here when this location opened in 1970. The uh, building is not the same and they are currently drive-through only. But man, this is the only Krispy Kreme in Raleigh. North Carolina is where Krispy Kreme started. That's a cool sign. Unfortunately, it looks like it suffered some damage on the other side here. they'll get that thing replaced. This thing's huge, by the way. All right, so this is the room tour. Now, no, this is a regular hotel room. They are thanking me for being here, but look at this. It's a suite. I mean, look at this. This is great. So this is going to be a great weekend. Look at this. In this view of downtown and actually we can see the big acorn right out the window i'll show you stand corrected there is uh, the overhang is right here but the big acorn is right there if you watch my video from last year you saw the big acorn 
All right, all checked in by this weird board of cork. Uh, I, as you know, if you watch this channel, I am a fan of weird art and hotel rooms, and this is kind of weird. Soupy Sales, if you guys have never seen him before, uh, he was a very funny comedian, famous for the pie in the face, and he was also really the first guy to ever be canceled for his content on television. So in the early days of television, he did a famous kids show, and famously, right around this time of year too, because his birthday's right around this time of year, uh, it was New Year's Day. And on New Year's Day, Soupy Sales opened his broadcast telling kids, hey, we're gonna be real quiet today because your parents are probably sleeping. <laughs> and he said, well, why don't you go up into their room and go through mom's purse, go through dad's pockets and find those crinkled up little pieces of green paper and mail them to Soupy Sales. <laughs> and so he was canceled for this, but he was so popular that they had to put him back on about two weeks later. So very interesting guy. Uh, I wanted to end this video with a pie in the face, but uh, didn't have, didn't have any company today for it. Uh, Krispy Kreme, that was neat to see. I had read about that in 1970s Krispy Kreme location. And then Jack Johnson, uh, I was fascinated when I saw that hospital. Apparently people used to go and explore it for years before they kind of fenced it in. Um, curious what they're gonna end up doing with that property. Very interesting guy. I used to watch his fights on VHS. I bought these like golden age of boxing and, and he would have these, you know, 100 round uh, uh, bare knuckle fights. And then he was in his 60s when he passed away. I'll show you the news article about it. It says he lost control of the automobile he was driving and he crashed into a light pole. I also read that he crashed into a tree. Um, and it said that he was on his way to see a fight uh, and unfortunately died on the way there. Here's another article that mentions that he was on his way to, to New York to see a fight uh, and unfortunately uh, lost his, lost control of the vehicle and lost his life right there in Franklinton. Tomorrow is going to be day one of Animate Raleigh. Uh, I'm gonna be there signing books, meeting people and talking about Colonel Sanders. So I will show you that tomorrow at two o'clock. I'll try to give you an overview of the convention as well. And in a moment, two boxes are gonna pop up, one here and here. On this side will be the one that YouTube says is best for you, but on this side will be my adventure in Raleigh from last year, where I went and saw the big acorn. So now you can see what it looks like. Also, you can see the very strange plaque about Ronald Reagan and Kate Smith that appeared below the giant acorn. So check that out or check out what YouTube says is best for you. Who knows you better, me or YouTube? I don't know, but I'll see you back here tomorrow at two o'clock.